everyone, this is Jody Mosher and Eugene Driscoll from the Valley Independent Sentinel for our weekly podcast, Naval Gazing. This week we had sort of a slow week, uh, news-wise, and we thought it might be interesting to talk to you a little bit about how a small newspaper like ours uh, copes. We have three people full-time, uh, one of which was on vacation this week, and not a whole lot of... <laughs> not a whole lot of... Stuff happening, no I'm meetings. just kidding, Tony. I wasn't <laughs> serious. So we thought, you know, it might be interesting to tell you how we came up with some stories this week, which Eugene did most of. Yeah, and this will be a short... What we do is we make them up. <laughs> there was no dog abandoned in Ansonia this week. There was no fire this morning, but no one's figured it out yet, so that's what we do. Yeah, and we, we tricked all the other newspapers, too. Yeah, they followed up on fake hey. stories. It was unbelievable. It was amazing. But... Before we get into like the little tips and things that we did to cope this week, uh, also we're coming off a holiday, which is always tough. You know, you got that extra day off in the week. People, I was coming off a vacation, so I was totally out of the loop. Yeah, people are for most of, most of June. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough time for news the summertime. But Jody, to contrast that, before we get into that, you were looking through some really old Evening Sentinel articles. Yeah, for I'm researching the flood of '55. This is a note, if anyone was there, remembers, can contact me for a project I'm doing for my master's. So I was at the uh, Shelton Library, Plum Memorial Library, two nights ago. This is a slow news week. I was able to go to the library and spend, you know, four hours there looking through old Sentinels. I pulled up the ones from August 23rd, I think. Uh, The Sentinel was downtown, flooded. They lost electricity. They couldn't publish for three days. Finally, I guess the New Haven Register let them publish, so their first edition after the flood was like August 22nd, three days later. And they were they went into New Haven to yeah, they went wherever into New the Register Haven. building was, maybe it was at the same part, same Ty- place, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the same place. Typed up all their stories, they used their uh, printing press to print out the paper, and like 14 different times, you know, thanked them for spirit of collaboration, yada yada. Um, at any rate, it was interesting to read Old Sentinels. Everyone uh, that we run into always remembers Sentinel. Everyone delivered for it or worked at it or their mom worked at it or whatever. And um, so going through old ones was really interesting. And I, I kind of liked they, uh, they had co- sort of a punchy style to their writing, uh, which I, I like to think that we have a similar style, you know, short sentences, um, a lot of subheads that sort of move the story along. And it, it just reminded me of the way we try to write stories. So... Um, Aside from the news on the flood, you know, they had, four, I think, a 14-page spread on the flood. And Did that say 50 caskets were washed away? 50 that... caskets. I mean, wow. I'm sure most people know all these stories because they hear them all the time. But it's news to us because we're relatively new to them. Yeah, the I mean, it's amazing the things. They were saying, uh, in the Sentinel did a really good job. They talk, They had a three days without a printing press, so they talked to everyone they could, got everyone's little stories that they could, uh, and they just had sections of each story that said, like, um, a human, a human, um, like, rope line. Essentially, like, people were holding hands and, and, and climbing out into the water to get people who were stranded, mm. including uh, Seccombs, the, the Seccombs men's store. I guess the family, a couple of the people, the brothers, rescued. Uh, one of their friends was, like, holding on to a street sign out in the, in the river. Um, and, you know, the Sentinel just did a great job detailing that. In one case, they said... Um, a man in Derby was trying, he was in a boat trying to rescue two people who had been stranded in their boat out by like O'Sullivan's Island, if I can, if I, placing what they were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and a piece of debris came down the river, hit his boat, knocked him out. And they're describing this in like impeccable detail. He was thrown out of the boat, he floated down river, held onto like a no parking sign over by like where Tailgaters is now. Um, people were trying to rescue him, he got taken away from there. All his clothes were taken off. Like, he was Jeez. stripped naked by the force of the water. So, just amazing. It was something when newspapers had staffs. I know. And they, you know, they spent, they said they didn't sleep for like four days going through all this stuff. So, at any rate, that was, that was a busy news week. And then yeah. you were telling me just before we went live with our podcast, <laughs> there was, some, like, we had a bizarre call, or I heard something bizarre in the scanner this week. I, I got an it was alone in the office. Maybe it was Tuesday, and uh, there was a report of a naked man on Bridge Street in Ansonia. And Bridge Street, we can see from our window. So uh, did you see the guy? 
I, from, I have bad vision. But, yeah, I could see clear, you know, I, if, if I didn't hear that it was a naked guy walking across the street in just his uh, sneakers, I would have just thought it was somebody wearing, like, a tan T-shirt. But, yeah, he was naked. <laughs> and he was just walking along real slow. It wasn't like he was causing a scene, just a naked guy. And it was a hot day. And hey, police hot. police met him on the other side. <laughs> and by the time the police arrived, you know, traffic had started to back up. It looked like it looked like the naked guy was leading a parade, you know. So it was, it was I don't know, it was just something. And you know, <laughs> I, the guy obviously was he had mental health issues of some kind. So uh, I mean, we didn't write anything about it because what's the point? It's poor guy. Why why embarrass him? But lo and behold, this is a tradition in the valley. Yeah, in the Sentinel on August twenty fourth, I think. Uh, Headline reads, Sassy Woman Driver Proves to be a Man. And essentially the story is police are... Sassy. Yeah, National Guardsmen, actually, who were in town after the flood, oh. um, were, quote-unquote, sassed by what they what they wrote as a lady driver or a woman driver. I guess in the 50s, you were either a driver or you were a woman driver. Like, <laughs> that was it. Watch um, out! 5 a.m. Sunday... Uh, they took her to police headquarters where, quote, This is on Clifton Avenue? Clifton Avenue. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they took her at the end of Bridge Street, and they said so they took her to police headquarters where it was discovered the lady, quote, was a man. Police, <laughs> <laughs> they booked him for reckless driving, operating under the influence, and impersonating a woman, which alleged, apparently that was a crime yeah, back then. Crime. Who knew? He, they said he had a black skirt, red coat, a babushka around his head, and, a babushka. and some open-toed shoes with stockings on. I don't know. Very descriptive. Yeah, the thing that I was questioning is, like, what is sassing the police? I don't know. Probably involves use of the word sugar. Sugar. I don't know. So, man, sassed police got arrested for being dressed as a woman. So that's pretty cool. I like that. So, all right, it was a slow news week, like I was saying before, right? I'm coming off a vacation. I'm out of touch. I don't know what's going on in the Valley. I don't even know where the office is anymore. I got lost going from Derby to Ansonia. And we had Monday off. It's 4th of July. You know, Tony's off. We're down a person. We don't have AC. We didn't have AC for like two weeks straight. It was 9,000 degrees. Thank you to all the people who gave us suggestions about where we should move to. That was really nice. Our AC is now working, so we're, we're, we're kind of waiting and seeing. But anyway, one thing that we did... Uh, Jody went to court on Wednesday, I think it was, and the case that she was following wasn't really panning out. It was supposed to something was supposed to happen that didn't happen with one particular case, and I really had nothing. Uh, we had the intern Michael Lee Murphy. There wasn't a lot going on, and so that's when I heard that call about a dog tied to a uh, a pole outside a vet's office on Westfield Avenue. And I'll be honest with you, normally, if it had been a normal day here, if I had to edit stuff or I had my own stuff going, my own derby stories going, I wouldn't have uh, done anything with that. I sort of figured there's too much other stuff going on. But we sort of started making calls on it. You know, we waited a couple of hours, and I sent the intern up to Dr. Nanavati, and then we, I talked to the Ansonia Animal Patrol officer who referenced another case of a dog being abandoned in a similar way up in, uh, up in Seymour. And uh, it kind of became a story that otherwise wouldn't have been. And when you know it, it's like the most read story of the week. Yeah. So that was one. We, we kind of capitalized on our police scanner this week. Um, the other thing that we did was looking at bigger reports. Like there's a story about Valley Transit, 40-page report, something like that. Uh, summer's a good time. We're looking at that stuff. We're trying to analyze longer documents and that sort of thing. So, so. basically what we do is I whore myself out <laughs> for non-stories for page views, and Jody does the real journalism. And maybe someone reads it, maybe they don't. Probably they're still reading this, the, the dog story and not my Valley Transit, but... And I think that's... We're coming up on our nine-minute mark. That's it! I saw 127 hours, the guy, the movie about the guy who cuts his arm off. I, I don't know. I, I wasn't impressed. 